The Gifts of the Wonderful River by Ernest F. Lyons. I often think of the St. Lucie as a giant sprawled on his back in the grass with his feet in the sea, his right arms extended lazily up the reaches of the South Fork, his left up the North Fork. The grass is the forests of virgin pines, the cabbage palm hammocks, and mangrove swamps which outlined his body when I first knew him as a boy. For many years into my young manhood, this recumbent giant of a river was my closest friend. In a succession of boats, one of the first was called Bearcat, another White Lightning, I lived upon him and learned from him. With a succession of hounds, walkers and red bones and blue ticks, every one of which I fondly remember, I camped on his banks, lay on my back, and with him watched Orion, the Dipper, and the Bear wheel in the sky. Moving up and down his reaches in the night, I wondered at the mystery of the trail of phosphorescence in the wake of my boat, where its billions of tiny flashing lights and as unexplained and in their way as awesome as the white band of the Milky Way. The river taught me many things and gave me many gifts. I saw how the sun sucked vapor up from him and made the clouds and sent it down again in trailing skirts of rain, so that he was an immortal being, constantly replenished. He showed me the magic circle of life on his banks and in his waters where something a little larger is always preying upon something smaller and being preyed upon in an eternal beginning all over again in the leaf mold of the forest or the algae of the waters. He showed me beauty in the graceful flights of egrets against the sunset, the nobility of eagles, the grace and symmetry of living things shaped by the hand of God through the millenniums, each best to perform its task. I learned from him respect and appreciation for the grace and deadliness of serpents, an understanding of the eons of deception in which an alligator has been shaped to look like a floating log. He showed me the mangrove trees making new land with their stilt-like roots, dropping their cigar-shaped seeds into his currents, gaining new footholds in the struggle to survive, and the seeds of his pines spiraling down on their little wings to find a starting place away from the deadly shade of their parents. The towering column of the century plant upon the arid bluff was a hand of life being raised 20 or more feet in the air with baby century plants growing on its fingers and when the tall spire fell, the hand threw the sparks of life forward. When I first went out upon him, there were few of the lights of men upon his banks and the thousands of tiny veins and trickles which constantly restored him were pure and clear. I never hesitated to bend down and drink of them. Now in my short lifetime, there is a glow in the sky along his legs and body where Stuart is rising, and up his right arm to beyond Palm City, and where the hand of his left lies open between White City and River Park. No longer is it safe to drink from his tributaries. One by one, his secret secluded places, the virgin hammocks, the hidden creeks, are being discovered and developed. In time, perhaps this week in the Stuart News, about big operators who have discovered the North Fork and are going to illuminate it from its source all the way down to Stuart with street lights and home lights and perhaps a few neon lights thrown in. And that's all right with me. I will join on the bandwagon and praise the efforts for they will be good. They will be sharing among many thousands a river that can be generous with his gift. It is my hope, however, that those who are to do this big developing may do it with the least harm to him and the most good to everyone. That would be to spare his trees and to preserve his jungle banks, not to become too greedy with their artificial yacht basins and to curb their bulldozers. For among the things he teaches are the inevitability of change and the irrevocability of a thing once changed. What changes are made should be planned to preserve as much of the beauty and charm of the river as possible if he is to continue to bestow his gifts.